we did recently go public, and as a public company, uh, now we, we, we uh, refer you to our forward-looking statements. Uh, these are standard disclaimers. Everything is captured in our S1 and on our website. In the limited time I have, I really want to emphasize why I think right now is a really exciting time for uh, next generation precision medicine therapies for heart disease, uh, which is where Tanaya is focused on uh, today. Um, you know, heart disease is still the leading cause of death in the world, more than all oncology combined, um, and that in itself makes it an interesting therapeutic area. But what's really exciting is really the fact that we now we have increasing genetic insight. As I was sharing on the panel earlier, um, we can we now are aware of more than 250 conditions, genetic cardiomyopathies, or monogenic disorders where the heart is a primary source of morbidity and mortality. Um, and so we can now take this very large indication and start. Uh, peeling back the onion and stripping it down based on genetics and genetic insight. And with that, then, we have the opportunity to apply some of the same precision medicine uh, approaches that have been successful in oncology and other therapeutic areas and now apply it to the heart. And there's some early clinical validation of such approaches working from a clinical and regulatory perspective, uh, including an ATTR cardiomyopathy and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. But what's been missing is that drug development toolkit to really make this into, uh, an, into a business and to make it into a broad uh, pipeline. And that's where uh, some of the work that we're doing in Tanaya comes in. So we are 100% focused on the heart. On the heart. That's, there's a lot of good to do there, and uh, we don't see the need to go elsewhere. Um, we are about 100 uh, employees, all based in South San Francisco. Um, we recently public. There's our, our stock ticker symbol. It was an upsize IPO, and with the funds we raised, we have enough funds to take us to the second half of 2023, which is a good position to be in. With the, with the funds we've raised to date, um, we've invested heavily in internal like capabilities, which I'll speak about later, as well as building a very, very strong scientific foundations. Some of that has been uh, inherited from our founders, including Deepak Sarvastava at the Gladstone Institute and Eric Olson at UT Southwestern. And with those investments now, we are at a point where we have an exciting pipeline that includes both rare genetic forms of heart disease as well as more prevalent forms of heart disease. And while a lot of people know us through the lens of gene therapy, we're actually officially a modality agnostic company. And in fact, in our early pipeline, we already have a small molecule approach that you'll hear about today. Um, and we have, um, sorry, exciting uh, milestones um, ahead of us, we're going to launch a natural history study before the end of this year for a lead gene therapy program. Um, we uh, are actively building a CGMP facility in, South, in, uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area, and that should be operational in the coming months. And then we expect to file two INDs in 2022. Uh, part of what makes Tanaya unique is not only the focus on the heart, but within the heart, we're advancing multiple therapeutic approaches from multiple platforms. And uh, they're uh, listed over here, gene therapy, cellular regeneration, and precision medicine. And people often ask us, why on earth do you have three platforms? And the simple answer is that each of these platforms are trying to solve a different problem that has historically plagued the field of drug development for heart disease. So I'll explain this briefly. In the case of gene therapy, the problem we're trying to solve are heart cells that are defective, usually because of a genetic mutation, either on the cardiomyocytes or some other cell of the heart. And the solution is to use um, uh, gene therapy to deliver a healthy copy of the gene that's uh, defective or some other therapeutic protein, initially with viral uh, vector approaches, but in the long term, probably non-viral approaches as well. With cellular regeneration, the problem that we're starting to solve is very different. It's the loss of cells. Those cells could be lost because of a heart attack, a myocardial infarction, it could be lost due to an infection like COVID-19, it could be lost due to chemotherapy. And what we're advancing at Tanaya is not a cell therapy approach, as I mentioned at the panel. What we're trying to do is very novel and very differentiated. It's an actual in vivo cardiac regeneration approach. So we use viral vectors to deliver proprietary combinations of genes to the patient's own cells and we induce those cells to create new heart tissue. And it sounds like science fiction, and we don't have time to cover it all today, but it's actually, we now have proof of concept in a large animal model, in a pig model, compelling data, and that's a human-sized heart. So um, this is certainly uh, proven that this can be translated from uh, cells in a dish now to a large heart. Uh, the, finally, there's the precision medicine platform, and the problem we're trying to solve there is lack of targets with human genetic validation. And so what we do, in addition to doing in vivo experiments in our own vivarium and in vivo pharmacology group in mice and rats and, and on the outside with pigs, we also use human iPSC-derived cardiomyocytes, not as a therapeutic, but as a disease model. So we can perturb the genetics of these cells with gene silencing or gene editing, 
induce a phenotype, and then we can do high throughput and high content screening of those phenotypes to identify novel targets. And once we find a target of interest, we can use those same disease models to then screen for therapies in a modality agnostic way. And that's important. That's the side of the Tanaya platform that allows us to do modality agnostic drug discovery. So our lead gene therapy program comes from the gene therapy platform, but our uh, lead small molecule program is against a target that was identified through the precision medicine platform, which gives us really kind of good proof of concept. This is our pipeline. It is deep, it's diverse, and it's currently wholly owned. Um, so there's five named programs here, and beneath the surface of those five named programs are a lot of other activity going on in each of the three platforms. Uh, what I want to call attention to, to uh, uh, is the diversity of the programs here. You'll see both rare genetic forms of heart disease and genetic cardiomyopathies, but you also see prevalent forms of heart failure, like HEF-REF and HEF-PEF, heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. And indeed, the, the, we expect to file two INDs next year, and one of them is for the, the program at the top, MyBBC3, which is the leading genetic cause of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, that turns out to be a large orphan. It's a lock and key approach uh, for a large orphan indication, more than 115,000 patients in the USA alone. But then I also mentioned the small molecule approach, and um, that is for HEF-PEF, which is not an orphan indication. That's, uh, there are more than 3 million patients in the USA alone. So that just gives you a sense of the, the diversity of approaches that Tanaya is taking. There's a lot of other exciting programs here. I really won't have time to talk about many today. I'll give a plug for the PKP2 gene therapy program, for which data will be presented at the European Society of Gene and Cell Therapy um, in, in just a, a few short weeks. Uh, but today I'll have one or two slides on the MyBC3 gene therapy program. So uh, I mentioned that this is the leading genetic cause of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Uh, this visual says it all. This is a very uh, large heart, which is one of the hallmarks of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, very thick in ventricles. There's fibrosis, disarray, fibro uh, fibrotic tissue. There's um, a disarray of the cell's uh, organization in, in the heart. Overall, the heart cells, uh, the heart uh, becomes stiff. It doesn't pump efficiently. There's also arrhythmia. So these patients uh, suffer from heart failure. They can suffer from sudden cardiac death. Um, and, uh, and there's really no treatment that addresses the underlying genetic cause of the disease. Um, it's very heterogeneous presentation. You have everything from homozygous infants that can generally they die within the first few weeks to months of life to uh, asymptomatic uh, adults. And then the majority of the patient population are symptomatic, severe heterozygous. We understand their genetics really well, and we understand the, the, the nature of the MyC3 protein very well. The most important detail is that it is a, a disease caused by haploinsufficiency. One gene is functioning properly, but the other one, whether it's because of a truncating mutation or missense mutation, is not functioning properly, and as a result, they have the disease. So we believe that a lock and key gene therapy approach where we deliver a healthy copy of the gene should be effective. The proof of concept of this is in an animal model. It's a double homozygous knock knockout model. This will be the one data slide I'll present, and I really won't present it other than to say blue is bad, red is good. Uh, blue is the untreated animals, and, 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 and red are the uh, treated animals. And what we're able to demonstrate is that with a single administration of an AAV uh, delivering a healthy copy of the human MyBC3 gene, we're able to get disease reversal, not just disease uh, progression prevention, but actual disease reversal, and that this is durable. And actually, we've taken this experiment out more than 20 months, and uh, with no diminution of effect. 100% of the um, of the uh, control animals are dead. 100% of the treated animals are alive. So it's a pretty dramatic result. So um, we're seeing a 20 to 30% improvement in ejection fraction versus control. 5% would be considered clinically meaningful. So 20 to 30% would be a dramatic effect. Um, we're making re really great progress on this program. Um, we have uh, received notice of uh, allowance of our IP for this, no, no unexpected safety signals, dose-dependent uh, effect, and uh, with, a, with a, when the effect is seen in clinically relevant doses, a manufacturing process has been locked. Um, we've received feedback from multiple regulatory agencies, including in the U.S. and agencies in Europe, uh, orphan drug designation as well. So we're in IND enabling studies. We expect to file an IND. Uh, uh, next year, and we expect to uh, initiate a global natural history study for this program this year. It's an exciting program. Um, I won't have time to cover the other programs, and I'm down to five minutes, so in the remaining time, I'm actually going to capture other parts of the Tanaya story that makes us sort of uh, unique. And, and one of them is the capabilities that we've chosen to inter internalize and integrate. Uh, we put them in these five buckets, disease models, capsid engineering, promoter and regulatory element design, uh, delivery, uh, as well as AV manufacturing. 
We don't have enough time to cover all of these in any uh, amount of detail, but what I can share is the benefits that have accrued to us by internalizing these capabilities, all focused on the heart. Uh, one is speed. We can go from product idea to initial product construct to development candidate very rapidly because of the internalization of some of these capabilities and develop deep, deep disease insight. We can also do more precise product delivery. There's a lot of emphasis on, on CAPSID engineering, but we're also finding that it's actually the combination of CAPSID promoter and regulatory element and delivery that really leads to more precise delivery and with uh, the therapeutic index being much wider than might be otherwise achieved if we weren't doing this work uh, in-house. And of course with AV manufacturing we have more control of our uh, destiny uh, with quality and uh, potency and identity of the vector um, as well as uh, control of our timelines and our cost of goods and the ability to scale up to larger um, uh, bioreactors. I'll talk about some of these in a little bit more detail. So CAPSID engineering, we've actually doing all this work in-house. Uh, we've by, At this point in time, we've screened more than a billion variants uh, from 30 d distinct libraries, all proprietary, all from our own uh, efforts. We've done this work in vitro in human iPSC-derived cardiomyocytes. We've done it in vivo in mice and increasingly much more relevantly in NHPs. And we're also beginning to do it in silico, so machine learning and AI uh, algorithms, some of it internally and some in partnership with external bodies. We already have proof of concept from first generation screening efforts that started in 2019 that we can create vectors that are outperform AEV9 in multiple dimensions. I've shown one example over here. Uh, we're five times better hard to liver um, uh, transduction uh, compared to AV9, uh, which we think is great, but we think we can do better. We're already on to second and third generation efforts to find even better vectors uh, to adopt that could outperform AEV9. Um, however, I think there's a lot of emphasis these days on ca capsid engineering. What we find is that what's actually equally, if not in some cases more important, is the actual design of the cassette, including the promoters, cardiac specific promoters, and other regulatory elements. And in our different programs over here, we have one example after another where through the, the molecular engineering of the actual cassette, you can uh, achieve higher expression, for example, within a cell, cell in the heart that's sort of uh, the, the graph on the far right, well above what can be achieved with the standard cardiac troponin T promoter on the one on the left uh, in our MyVC3 program. It was the uh, molecular engineering on the promoter as well as the cassette that really made the difference much more than a different route of administration or, uh, or, or different capsid. And in a regeneration uh, pro, uh, project using reprogramming, uh, that's the center panel, we were able to find novel regulatory elements that allow us to express uniquely in the cardiac fibroblasts and to detarget the cardiomyocytes. So in some cases, we're not only achieving higher expression and more selective expression in the heart versus other organs, we're actually able now to fine tune which specific cell in the heart are you expressing the gene in? And for one program, it might be the cardiomyocyte, and the other one, it might be the cardiac fibroblast. That's just the kind of work that most folks are not doing, and I think something that gets lost in all the emphasis on somebody trying to find what they think is the absolute best capsid, um, when that might actually make the difference. It really depends on the disease biology. Um, finally, on manufacturing, we have made significant efforts early on in our corporate history. We, are, um, we started off with a, a vector core, and we're working from the shake flask to the 50-liter scale. Importantly, everything we do, we tend to be a little bit thorough, and so we actually uh, internalized both HEK293 and SF9 recombinant baclovirus so that we could do head-to-head -head comparisons for every novel capsid and every novel product candidate to ensure that we understood if there were any differences in potency um, between one program or one platform or the other. Uh, once we uh, establish the comparability over there, then we scale up to 200 liter in-house. So we are now in a position where we can produce our own vector, not only for the in vitro and in vivo work in our in small animal models, but even when we're running, running large animal uh, model studies in pigs, 40, 50 pigs, we can produce all that vector, high quality, high, um, high purity, uh, in-house, uh, we can do all the IND enabling GLP talk studies uh, internally, but we didn't stop there. We're now scaling up to uh, 1,000 liter in a CGMP facility that we're going to uh, that is construction is underway. The site has been selected. All the work is coming together very nicely, and so we intend to produce the first drug for the first in human study from our own wholly owned uh, manufacturing facility. And and so we don't expect to rely on CDMOs really for either early you know research or for clinical manufacturing in the near future. 
But we're not stopping there, as you see in the far left, the starting materials. In order to really go from beyond rare diseases into more prevalent forms of heart disease, we know we have to be able to scale beyond the 500 liter or 1,000 liter or 2,000 liter bioreactor scale. We have to be able to go to 5,000 and beyond. So we've actually done some of that innovative work in-house, and we've actually even filed IP on novel manufacturing technology that will allow us to scale. So, you know, hopefully, in the short time that I had, and we're, we're, we're at time, I've conveyed to you a sense of um, how dynamic and how interesting Tanaya is as a company today and, and, a, and a leading, an emerging leader in next generation therapies for heart disease. Uh, importantly, our catalyst next year, we expect to file two INDs in, in, um, in 2022. We'll have a, a GMP facility operational by then. We'll have launched a natural history study by then. We have several programs right behind those two. Uh, that will, uh, with INDs expected in 2023 and beyond. Uh, but with the benefit of the three platforms and all those internalized capabilities that I mentioned, we have many exciting new programs coming up right behind that. And we have enough cash that takes us into the next two years to be able to advance all of this uh, great science uh, without having to make any tough choices about what to hold back. We'll let science dictate what we take forward, not cash for now. So it's an exciting time to be uh, at Tanaya. And, um, I would love to take questions if there were any, but we're out of time and I gotta run to the airport. So thank you for your time and attention.